Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to set up a EC2 instance within a private VPC subnet and see how traffic routes via a NAT gateway using specific route tables. Let's get started. Okay, so we're back in the EC2 management console and we can see our public um, instance here. Now we're gonna create another instance and we're gonna select the Amazon EC2 type and we're just gonna leave it as the T2 micro. Next, we're going to select our um, tutorial and we're going to select our private subnet in EU West 1A. And we can see that the auto assign public IP address has been set to disabled. And that's fine. And we're going to say add storage, that's fine. And we're going to give it a name and we're going to make our tag our name and we're going to call this our private um, instance. And let's have a look at our security groups. So we have our security groups here. Um, we have our, um, we're gonna use an existing security group, the one we kind of created. And we're gonna run into a problem here, um, but that's fine, let's continue. And then we're gonna say that for Keeper we want to use this more tutorial. I'm going to launch that instance. So what this is doing is it's going to launch our instance into our private um, subnet. We can see that a public IP address has not been assigned to it. So we'll need a different way of connecting to our private instance. Okay, so we can see our private instance has launched here. Um, and it's got an IP address of 10.10.1.47. We can also see that it doesn't have a public IP address. So this means we can't initiate a connection into the private instance. For example, if we just wanted to quickly SSH to it. So what we're gonna to have to do is use our public instance as a jump box, which then allows us to SSH into the private instance. So before we go any further, let's try and ping our um, public instance from our public, uh, our private instance from our public instance. So uh, we're going to go to our public instance like we've SSH previously and we're just going to ping it from here and we're going to type in our ping command and hit enter now we don't actually expect this to work because of our security groups so let's just have a look at our security groups we've set up and we can see that our inbound security group doesn't have our ICM ping so we're going to edit this and we're going to add a new rule and we're going to select the all ICMP IPv4 and we're gonna say, let's allow this from our um, whole VPC cider. I'm gonna save that. And there you go. Uh, we can see almost immediately that the host started responding to ping. So that's great. That's This proves that our public instance in our public subnet can actually talk to our private instance in our private subnet. So what we're gonna do now is we need to SSH to it. So like previously, we still need to use the .pem key to SSH into our private instance. But we're gonna use the public instance as a jump box, so we need that PEM key on that public instance. So to do this, we're gonna use PSCP. Um, this is for party version of SCP, or if you're using Linux, you can use SCP. And we're gonna specify our, we're gonna launch PowerShell, and then we have our PSCP download here. We're gonna specify our identity, um, which is our martyrstudio.pbk we made in the last video. And then we're gonna specify the file we want to copy. So that's in our downloads folder at the moment. And we're gonna copy our PEM we downloaded from the AWS console earlier. We're gonna specify our EC2 user is our username here. And then our public IP address of our public instance and where we want to store the file. So we want to store it in um, home, ec2 user, multi-tutorial.pem. So if we enter on that, that's going to upload our file to this instance. So if we do ls, ah, there it is. So that's how we can get our private pem key onto our public instance. Now, if we want to use this, we need to change the uh, file permissions to 400. And that allows only read from the EC2 user. And then we're gonna chmod that. Now we can SSH the private instance now. So 
Let's take our private instance and it has our private IP address. And we can do an SSH to EC2. Uh, let's specify the multi tutorial. And we're going to just explicitly specify the username to our private instance. And there you go. Now we're logged into our private instance. Um, and we can see that the IP address is now 10.10.1.47, which is our private IP of our private instance. So that's how you might use a jump box to SSH from a public instance into a private instance. Okay, so let's see how this private instance can access the internet. So we're gonna take our IPFI example again, and we're gonna pop it into there. And we see that it's returned a response that says 99.80206108. And if you remember from the uh, couple of videos ago, this is actually the I elastic IP address of our NAT gateway. So let's go back to our uh, VPC. And you can see what we expect here. So if we go to our NAT gateways, see our NAT gateway, and this is our elastic IP address, 99.80.206.108. So any traffic that's gonna leave that subnet, that private subnet, is gonna get routed via this NAT gateway. And it's gonna end up having this 99.80.206.108 IP address when it reaches the internet. So if we have a look at our root table, we can confirm this by having a look at our private root table, routes, and then we can see any internet traffic is destined for our NAT gateway. So let's let's um, have a look at this in more detail to see kind of how this works. So over here we have our we have our EC2 instance, and this has an IP address of ten point ten point one. Um, Four seven, and this is in our private subnet. Okay, and then the other things in this network path are our um, NAT gateway. internet gateway okay so our NAT gateway as we've pointed out earlier our NAT gateway sits in a public subnet so this is in our public subnet here do, 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 do. and then from our previous video we know that the internet gateway maps are public IP addresses or elastic IP addresses onto our private address space. So what we can say is, if we have a look at our NAT gateway, we can see that our 99.80.206.108 is actually mapped to our 10.10.0.107. So our 10.10.0.107 is mapped to our 99.80.206.108. 9980206108. Okay, and then this has the IP address here, 0107. So when our private IP address wants to access the internet, it's going to send out a packet. And let's say our, um, our IP affi pub IP is 8. 9, 10, 12, for example. So this is where we want to access. This is the, the web server um, out on the internet. So this is gonna send, send a packet to the router, and it's gonna have a look at the root tables and say, okay, your request matches this route. And that's what we set up in the VPC. So it's gonna send the packet to our NAT gateway. And that NAT gateway is gonna receive this packet and say, okay, uh, the packet was our 10 for source being 
ten one four seven and the dest being eight nine ten twelve. This is out on the internet, so we're going to go to the NAT, and the NAT is going to say, okay, I'm going to network address translate this for you. So it's going to take the packet and it's going to change. It's going to change the source to 10, 10, 0, 107. And it's going to keep the same destination as 8, 9, 10, 12. Okay. And then it's going to send the packet it's going to record this, so it's, it's going to know it needs to keep in its NAT table that I've just trans I've just done this translation. So it's going to record that in our NAT table, and then it's going to send the packet on its way, and that's going to hit the router um, again, where it's going to leave. So we're leaving the public subnet, so it's going to see this root table or this root entry at dot zero is going to go to i for internet gateway so it's going to leave there and it's going to enter the internet gateway so at this point the internet gateway is going to take the packet and it's going to see this packet here so the source is 10 10 0 107 and the destination is 8 9 10 12. and it's going to map this it's going to say okay uh, I know that 10.10.0.107 is actually assigned this public IP address, 99.80.206.108. So I'm going to change a packet again, and I'm going to make you, um, your source is 99.80.206.108, and the destination is what you specified, 8.9.10.12. There you go. And it's going to go off. Um, into the cloud and the host is going to do some processing for us and it's going to return the response okay so the response is going to come back um, let's say as a orange um, that's an orange response here and the response is going to come back and it's going to say okay the source I've just made this packet here's 8 9 10 12 and the destination for you was 99802061008. So bear in mind that this private private instance sent this packet initially, right? And it's going to come back to the internet gateway and kind of have no relevance to that private because it's totally private and anything outside the internet doesn't know about it. So it's going to hit the internet gateway and it's going to come back as like this. Okay? So we have our source, where it came from, this host over here, um, and then our destination, which is this. And the internet gateway is going to see that and go, OK, um, we have a mapping for this IP address, and we're going to change the packet to be this. So on its way, it's going to say, the source is going to say the same, 8, 9, 10, 12. But it's, the internet gateway is going to change the packet to be this IP address. It's going to make 10, 10, 0, 1, 0, 7. And then it's going to send it. The root is going to pick it up and it's going to go, okay, you're on the VPC. You just need to go to this subnet. So it's going to send it over to uh, back to the NAT gateway because that's where that IP address is, right? And the NAT gateway is going to pick this up. So it's going to say, okay. Uh, the source was this and the destination was me I know using my NAT table that this private instance requested that so I'm going to change the record uh, I'm going to change the packet and make it 8, 9, 10, 12 and the destination um, I'm going to change back to the instance so is going to change it back to 10.10.1.47 and that's made possible because in these packets we also have report numbers which I've excluded but um, the NAT table includes the port numbers so when you send a packet and when you receive a packet those port numbers also match up so it makes it easy have a look at the network fundamentals video um, for an example of that so it's going to change the packet for us so it's 8 9 10 
10 to 1 to 4 to 7 and then it's going to send it over there to the EC2 instance and if you look here where we compare these and these you can see that they just switched around so all the all this NAT gateway and internet gateway basically does the translation for us so we can get out to a public IP address two sets of public IP addresses here which is required for our internet routing so that's about it for our how private instances communicate with the internet uh, via VPC uh, it's a lot to take in if you didn't understand the uh, NAT uh, example pop back to the network fundamentals where uh, we go over a bit more simplified example this is showing how a private IP is going via the routers to the NAT gateways via the routers to the internet gateways and will hopefully help firm up your understanding of how networking works with AWS VPC Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below for some more great content on AWS, 3D printing and home automation.